Need LASIK? Trust the experienced team at the LASIK Center at Evergreen Eye Center. No glasses, no contacts, no limits. What will you do? LASIK at evergreen.com. Moving 92.5. Brooke and Jubal's second date update. You know, whenever a relationship ends, I always feel the most sorry for the woman. Why? Really? Well, because they might be sad about the breakup or whatever, but I know what they're about to go through. They're about to get inundated with dudes trying to pick up the rebound. Oh, yes. Yeah. Totally. And <laughs> looks like that's what we've got on the phone today. Patrick emailed us, and he just found out that a girl that he likes recently broke off her engagement, and now he's ready to pounce. What? Oh, okay, wow. engagement. That's like a serious thing. That's not just she broke up with her boyfriend. What's up, Patrick? Hey, how we doing? What's and up? whatever opens the door, I will take with this girl. What? Okay. <laughs> Wow. So there's a door open. How do you plan on jamming your way in there? Gross. That is <laughs> so gross. Like that? Oh, God. Oh, that's a yeah, bad way to say it, I guess. Yeah. Oh, God. Patrick. Well, let's just ask about the girl first. What's her name? Her name's April. And April? Have, okay. have you known April for a while? Yeah. We actually we went to high school together, and she has always been the one that got away from me. And oh. uh, it just floats in my mind every so often, you know? Did you guys have a relationship in high school then? We came close, we went on a date, and then Im- immediately got awkward right afterwards. We were good friends, and then it was done. Okay, mm-hmm. what was, was the date awkward? or? Well, the date didn't have to be awkward, but I just I couldn't get it together. I was so nervous. Oh, no. Aww. But here's what we did. I knew that my dad was going to be able to prepare the best meal in the city, and I really wanted to impress her. Mm. So he actually made a menu in advance. I invited her <laughs> over. I gave April the menu a week before, and she <laughs> was looking forward to it all week. Okay, so she knew that your dad was involved with this date leading up to it. Yeah, she did. I, I'm close with my parents. She'd met him before. Okay. You know, we were friends. Okay. So this was in high school, right? Correct, yeah. Okay, and so oh. you invited her over to your family's house for dinner. That's correct, okay, yeah. Okay, cool. Fancy. Sorry, it was, a, it, got, it was a little... I was trying to figure out what you're, if your dad yeah. had a restaurant or something. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so you invited her over to your family's house for dinner, and that was the date that you went on. Exactly. That okay. was the beginning of this evening that I had kind of, like, planned for us. Okay. So she came over, and dinner went fantastic. It was so good. It was just the two of us. You know, my parents, like, left us alone and did the whole <laughs> just being a chef and wait staff kind of part. That's really cute. That is. That's cool. I know. It was adorable. And then afterwards, of course, I was like, I'm going to take her out to a movie. Okay. okay. So we go out, and we're actually going to go see Night at the Museum, if you remember that old old film. <laughs> ben Stiller. Oh, that's a Ben Stiller film. Yeah. That's right. It was really cool. I find out halfway through that she actually has already seen the movie. Oh. I was like, oh, you know, okay. Uh, sorry, I'm wasting your time. I'm not really sure what to do with this. And oh my gosh, she was she's... like, no, no, no. I'm having fun. This is wonderful. She's the only person in the country that saw Night at the Museum twice. <laughs> <laughs> Quite possibly. And she started throwing up signs left and right that she wanted to escalate something. She just wanted something. She had her arms around my torso. She was oh. holding my hand when she got the chance. Oh. And I was so nervous. I froze up. I didn't know how to handle it. I'd had such a crush on her for so long. Oh. Uh, couldn't make the move. Sweet, awkward Patrick. Yeah, so awkward. And... <laughs> Afterwards, I drive her back to her place, and we're standing outside of her front door. And she's looking at me, and I know what she's wanting to do. Yeah. And I, I just couldn't do it. Oh, you no, didn't, Patrick. You didn't kiss her? I couldn't kiss her. I couldn't do it. And she looked at me. I mean, time passed. <laughs> it was awkward. <laughs> she just hugs me and says, I'll see you later, and walks inside. Oh, my yeah. God. So no wonder you got friend-zoned. You friend-zoned You yourself. did it to yourself, yeah. <laughs> I really did. I I crushed my own dreams. So wait, how long ago was this? This was 10 years ago. Oh my gosh, and you're still that worked up about it. It stays in your mind, you know? It's it's like the thing that never happened, that you always wanted it to be. So have you guys been talking over the last 10 years, or are you just stalking her on Facebook, and that's how you know she broke off her engagement? (laughs) Um, I haven't kept up with her too much, honestly, over the last 10 years. She kind of stayed in the hometown, and I moved out, but... uh, a friend of mine recently actually told me about it and said, hey, do you remember this girl? And said, you should try to reconnect with her. And I honestly, I don't even know if she remembers me, but... She probably remembers you. She probably yeah. remembers you as a yeah. dude who wouldn't make a move. Yeah. Well, the timid young man, yes. Yeah. Oh, 
<laughs> All right, so you know that her engagement was called off, and now you want to just call her up and ask her out. Totally. And so you think it's going to be cute that we do it in a second date update? Yeah, I mean, you guys are going to talk with her first, so if she doesn't remember me, I can just, I can bail. I can just hang out and let it go. That's true. <laughs> So we're your security blanket is what we are, Patrick. You're still scared. How did you get her phone number anyway? People hold on to the same phone number from high school. I know I still have the same one. Yeah, that's uh, true. Hers is still the same. Yeah, okay. I got lucky on that. You know it's still the same? Yeah. My buddy confirmed it. He pulled it up in his phone. It's the same number. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll play a song and then come back and call her and see if she remembers you and then see if we can get you a date. I really hope this works. I actually do too. Yeah, me too. Do you? No, not okay. really. I don't really don't care. Uh, I just, just want to do the second part of the second date update. Right. So hang on, okay? Okay. Hang on. Moving 92.5. Brooke and Jubal in the mornings. Second date update. Everybody has the one that got away. I know for me, I dated this girl named Michelle in high school. We went on one date. Really? All the signs were there. Yeah. Then I put my hand on her leg while we were watching the movie, everything. Oh, I never I made a move, never kissed her. I got friend zoned, didn't talk to her after, and I'll always remember her. Oh, Are you serious? Man. That's so romantic. Yeah, it wasn't so much about the romance. Her dad was an exec at Paramount, and I thought maybe <laughs> if we like had a long relationship, I could somehow get into the movie industry. So that's what it was yeah. about for me. But well, then again, screwed. my first love is my career. So. Yeah. And then screwed I, yep. Career. Settled for radio, and now yeah. I'm at the bottom of the barrel. God, you could have been Matthew McConaughey. Oh, man. If I only would have kissed that girl. Yeah, you idiot. man. And Patrick is going through the same kind of thing right now. He's on the phone for a second date update. He went out with a girl named April in high school. He was too scared to make a move. Fast forward 10 years later, he just found out that she ended her engagement, and he got her phone number and wants to call her and see if he can get another shot at love. All right, Patrick, you ready? I am so ready. Okay, and you heard through the grapevine that she ended her engagement. I didn't even ask. How long ago was that? It was actually really recently, within the last couple of weeks, and I'm trying to pounce while I can. Yeah. Okay, so we may call her and she could still be crying. Hopefully that's not the case, and I can cheer her up. <laughs> yeah, or hopefully she's crying the appropriate amount where she'll give you a chance. You know, where she's like, oh, I just need somebody God, to hang guys. out with. This crying. just feels so soon. Okay. But... However you guys can make it happen, I'm up for it. All, All right. right. Well, dialing her phone number right now. Here we go. Hello? Hi, is this April? Yeah, this is she. April, how are you? This is Jubal from Brook and Jubal in the morning. It's a radio show? Uh, okay. How's it going? <laughs> what? What is that? Well, I'm calling you today because one of our listeners actually sent us an email asking us if we can get in touch with you. Is that a joke? What? Nope. <laughs> His name is Patrick, and apparently you guys went on a date in high school. I know it's been probably about 10 years since you guys talked. That's what he told us. But he wanted us to call you because he still thinks about you a lot. What? Uh-huh. Is, is that like, oh, my God, that's so crazy. I think about him. What? Or is that not that? Um, processing. Okay, processing. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm guessing you didn't expect this phone call. No. Um, okay, so... I'll tell you why we're calling. We do a segment on our show called The Second Date Update. So if somebody goes out on a date with a person and then they end up getting blown off or not getting a call back, you can email us and we'll get that person on the phone and ask what happens. So technically this is a second date update from your first date 10 years ago. Hey. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> I, I'm 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 really shocked. Besides the fact that it's been a decade, I'm just shocked that he's reaching out about me. He was so cute about you. He told us like the awkward story of your guys' date, where he had his dad plan this dinner, and you went over to his parents' house. It was very sweet. What about Patrick, though? Did you actually enjoy going out with him, and were you interested in him? Oh, my God. I had the biggest crush on that kid. <gasps> you <Really>? did? <laughs> yes. Oh. He said that he always regrets not making a move because he feels like he screwed himself. Do you remember that moment on the doorstep when he dropped you off? Yes. And I felt like an idiot because I was, like, practically throwing myself. But he gave me nothing. So I, I just felt so 
rejected and Whoa. I don't know I just I, I was I, I tried to comfort myself by saying maybe he's gay he must be gay <laughs> <laughs> but I knew he wasn't so it didn't really provide much comfort and I just I ended up getting angry okay yeah I mean that's what he said he said you guys uh, didn't really talk much after that well no I was humiliated and I thought like I wasn't gonna call him oh okay you can understand now though like that it's been 10 years <clears throat> that he was just an awkward teenager that was nervous, right? I think it's really endearing, especially, you know, with the way the world is now, to know mm. that he was so shy to even want to kiss me when he did. That's just really beyond sweet. Okay, oh well, God. you know what else is endearing? He's actually on the phone listening and wants to talk to you. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Wait, aren't you excited? Patrick, are you there? Hey, April. Hi. Oh, my God. It's been a while. <laughs> Hi, Patrick. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. okay. This is like beyond yeah. awkward. Oh my God. <laughs> well, um, uh, do you guys need some help? Are you going to work this one out <laughs> together? It's just a conversation. I, how have you been? Um, <laughs> no. Um, I, I, I've actually been better. Um, I, I just broke off an engagement, so your timing is uh, impeccable. Well, um, I'm really sorry to hear that. That sucks. But I want to do what I couldn't do 10 years ago. I, I want to at least get the chance to take you out. I'm sorry I couldn't do it 10 years ago. I'm sorry that I, I fell short at the finish line. I really did. But um, it's weighed on my mind ever since, and I'm really hoping that you'll just give me a second chance. Um, well, um, this is hard for me. Um, just keep in mind, you know how we were really young back then, and we, look, we both were attracted to each other, and nothing happened because we were both awkward teenagers, Right. So keep right, that in mind, uh, we're, we're grown up now, but back then I didn't have the cognitive skills I have now, so I'm just going to say it, okay, Patrick? Okay. I was feeling so rejected by you and so angry. I uh, There was that big party um, that Rob had. You know, Rob was always having those big high school parties. Yeah, yeah. Remember? Yeah. Okay, so I went and I made out with your brother. What? Whoa! You made out with who? Your brother, Thomas. <laughs> I was drunk. I was stupid. I was mad at you for not kissing me. Oh. So you went and kissed a lookalike? Your brother? <laughs> That's messed up. You know, we were teenagers. It was a crowded house and... It was nothing serious, but you know, it was definitely a makeout session, and I'm, I thought it would I'm make so me feel glad. better, and it made me feel worse. I'm so glad I have all the details. I'm stoked about that. Thank you. Wait, I can't, what are, are you, you upset? Rob? Of course, I'm upset. That's really weird. I'm finding out about this at the same time that a lot of people are. <laughs> but it was like ten years ago. So I mean. <laughs> I can't believe he never told me, and I definitely can't believe you never told me. I was very immature. It was 10 years ago. Yeah. Second, when you're drunk, especially for the first time, I had no idea how low your inhibitions can go. <laughs> yeah. April, I, sorry, I'm still trying to get over my shock um, about this. It's just kind of, it's kind of weird. Like, it feels like losing out all over again. It's, it's kind of a double whammy over here. <laughs> Well, you know, but, but we were all kids, and, I mean, it's not like I made out with your dad when he made dinner for us. Did you consider making out with my dad? <laughs> Valid question, Patrick. Yeah, why are you bringing that up? <laughs> no, I mean, he was old, but he was, like, a hot old. What? What you... <laughs> Where? Uh, why would you? That's insane. <laughs> That's my point, Patrick. You're missing the point. The point is that I liked you, but you didn't make the move. <laughs> so I had to make the move. And unfortunately, 
unfortunate. Whatever. It was with your brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, April, would you like to go out with Patrick again on a second date and see if maybe he can make a move then? Oh, man. I- I'm open to it because a lot of time has passed. I just feel better having told him everything because it's been weighing on me. So with that, I'm open to possibility with him. Okay. Oh, okay. Awesome. You hear that, Patrick? I I hear it. Um, I feel like I'd be thinking about my brother the entire time. That Is that a good thing or a bad thing for you? <laughs> Valid question, Jubal. No, it's a bad thing. It's a bad thing. Okay. All right. So Wait. is that a no then? You don't want to go out with April? After all this? I, I, I can't do it. What? This is a no. Oh, she no. just made out with your brother. Big deal. Like 10 and, years ago, yeah, too. Who cares? You waited this whole time. What are you doing? You were painting this beautiful love story, and just this one little thing is going to ruin it all? It was my brother, and he lied to me about it, and then she lied to me about it, <laughs> and there's no way I'm getting involved in that again. Oh, wow. <laughs> so oh you're still, God. you're basically still in high school. <laughs> In a way, I still can't get past it. Call it whatever you want, but I'm out. Oh, All my right. God. I did not expect that. Me neither. Patrick, we can really have something together, and you're allowing us to miss the potential a second time. Look, I don't want my first kiss with you to be thinking about my brother the whole time. Wow. That, that's uh-huh. a deal breaker for me. Oh. Yeah. All right. You're lost. You chickened out for the second time on making the first move. Oh, 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 oh. oh my god, and you Sorry, know she's Patrick. gonna go call your brother That's right now, saying, right? Yeah. <laughs> Broken Jubal in the morning. Text in at 78592 that says, Get over it. It was 10 years ago. She's probably lost her virginity since then, too. Oh, man. No, stop it. Whoa. Talking about today's second date update. It's Brooke and Jubal in the morning. If you missed it, Stude Patrick wanted to call a girl named April. They went out 10 years ago in high school. Yeah. He was really attracted to her. She was sending him all the right signals to give her a kiss. But he was too nervous, so he didn't do it. And that was really kind of the last time they hung out even. And fast forward 10 years later, she was engaged. And then that engagement ended. So he heard all about it. And, of course, he pounced just like dudes do. They wait until someone's single and they're like, hey, me. And it was just pretty new, too. Anyway, we contacted her. And she admitted that she was frustrated that he never made a move. 10 years ago, so she made out with his brother at a party (laughs) out of revenge. Not currently made out with his brother. It was like the same month, basically. Yeah, at the time. (laughs) And in the end, she was willing to give Patrick another chance, but Patrick just couldn't get over the fact that she kissed his brother 10 years ago. That is so weird to me. I I mean, this guy, he gets hung up on things. I I I think she dodged a bullet, dude. I could live... With a kiss, like if you know somebody. That's all they did brother, was they made but out. Doing more, maybe not. But that didn't but, happen. That's not yeah. even yeah. on the table. That's what I'm saying. So I get why he's upset, but not and it was ever. ten really? years ago. Yeah, not upset cares? enough to not see her again. Well, hopefully he's never school. talking to his brother again either. Yeah, that's his a good brother. point. <laughs> Destroy Remember, the family, absolutely. If you Turn wa- your back. If you want to do a second date update, all you have to do is email the show, and we will call the person who didn't call you back. Moving ninety two point five. Moving 92.5. Mm, hey, girl. What's up with you? Wait a minute. Is this the right number? It's um the loser line. Come on. Just call me back. It's a special Halloween-themed edition of the loser line today, <laughs> meaning that every voicemail we received is from someone who met a random hottie this past weekend while attending a Halloween party yeah. or a Halloween gathering. Uh-huh. Woo! For example, if you were out at the club this Halloween weekend and a guy dressed as a mummy approached you using this charming pickup line, Aw, excuse me. You look so good, you're making my downstairs area rise from the dead. Oh, God. Oh, man. (laughs) It's a boneyard is what you're saying. Yeah. That's bad. After he says that, whatever you do, don't hurl a pumpkin at his head. Instead, tell him that you want to bob for his apples. And that's when you give him the number to the loser line. So hopefully... He leaves an awkward voicemail that we can play for you on the air. Voicemails like this one. Next message. Hey, Lisa. It's uh, Stu from a Jeff Halloween party last night. <laughs> I was just wondering how you were doing today. Maybe you had a bit of a hangover from that spooky juice. I sure do. That's why I'm, well, that's not why I'm calling you, but I just want to let you know that I had an amazing time last night. I've never made out with a sexy centaur lady before. Um, (laughs) 
that was the first time I've ever made out with a creature like that. And uh, <laughs> it's just kind of weird, me rubbing my fingers through your fur and feeling your horns. But it, but I kind of liked it. I'm not going to lie. I'm wondering if you liked it. Um, I think you did. I think we both like making out with each other's faces. But there's just one, <laughs> just kind of wondering this one thing. And it's, it's, it's very, very weird. And I <laughs> probably not. I have to ask you. When... I was making out with you the way you, your costume is all set up. Was there somebody in the back of it while we were making out? <laughs> I swear to God, I saw the back of your costume move, but I don't, I don't know. It, it could have been, <laughs> it could have been the spooky juice. You never know. So, <laughs> can you, uh, can you call me and tell me, was there somebody in the back of your costume? Next message. What? Maybe she had a what? team costume with somebody, and they were back there, like, oh my God, God will she stop making out with this guy? <laughs> right. I'm suffocating back here. I mean, I thought it was bad when he talked about how much rubbing his fingers through fur turned him on. Yeah. yeah. And, and now it's like another person. Yeah, it's it? not something you should admit. And <laughs> the term spooky juice. What? Not good. You know, well, I assume that that was like one of those party Pinterest things that yeah. they kicked Punch. up. Yeah. But still, I don't know. You feel like it's wrong? It just made me feel dirty. I yeah. Mean. Remember, you can get the special loser line phone number. All you have to do is text the word loser to 78592. When you get that phone number, you can give out to somebody who's hitting on you that you would rather not have hitting on you. So we can play voicemails like this one. Next message. Hey, hey, Brent. This is Tom. I'm at the pumpkin patch you told me to meet you at around 12 o'clock midnight. i actually been here for like 15 minutes. Where the heck are you? Like, you gonna have me waiting out here like some Charlie Brown shit? I really don't understand. Like, I'm sitting here around these pumpkins, sitting here on the farm. I don't know if the farmer's gonna see me. Like, I, I may go to jail. You already know I'm on probation. I ain't trying to go to jail. So, I'm here for another 10 minutes, and that's all. And I'm out. Like, I'm not going to jail for waiting for a chick in a pumpkin patch. That's some bullshit. <laughs> oh I agree. You it should is... definitely not go to jail for waiting for a girl in a oh, pumpkin patch. Man, it's I like Charlie you. Brown the Great Pumpkin is an adult now. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. It just never shows up. Oh, man. I like it when people give out the loose line phone number and then tell somebody to do something like Dude, that. Dude, it's like, so oh, mean. Here's my number. Great. Go meet me at this pumpkin patch at midnight Those and I'll be there. Dedicated fans to us. Thank I know. You guys. I love it. Thank you for doing that. Again, all of these loser line voicemails are actually voicemails that we got over Halloween weekend. Here's another one. Next message. Hey, Jessica, this is uh, I was a guy dressed up as Zeus the other night at the club when we met. Uh, loved your mermaid costume, by the way. Uh, anyway, I was just calling because uh, you gave me your number, and I was really excited about meeting you. I really liked you, but I looked up your horoscope. I remember you told me you were Libra, and I got to tell you, I, I love the fact that you're into astrology. We have so much in common, but uh, I got bad news. I just want to read this to you real quick. It says... Nobody struggles with Jekyll and Hyde syndrome more than a Libra. As you're torn between sticking with someone from your past or someone from your future. And this means to me that you've still got someone else in your life and you're deciding between them or someone else. I just don't want to be a part of that. I don't mean to sound cruel. I just, I know where this is going. It's written in the stars and I just uh, can't do it. So uh, as much as I liked you, uh, I gotta say goodbye. Next <laughs> message. Well, at least oh it's so weird. At least he had the decency to call and yeah. tell her that, you know. I think she had already decided though. She didn't yes. want the future. That's why he got the loser line. He did get yeah. the number for the loser line. I know. I don't think I've ever met a dude who is super into astrology, by the way. I don't think I've ever met anybody who put that much stock into it, oh, where yeah. they'd be like, "Well, clearly, yeah. it's right there." I written mean. down facts you've got another lover and i cannot go out with you sorry here's another message from the loser line next message hey uh jessica it's again um i met you at house party uh i was the clown and anyway we we seem to be getting along great and uh, but you're not calling me back and i think i know what's going on um I'm really sorry. I, I feel like I need to apologize to you. I had a lot to drink, and it came down on me like a ton of bricks. And <laughs> I saw your silhouette up in the window from outside. And my God, I, if I could take it all back, I would. But, well, what I did to that pumpkin, <gasps> there's no excuse for it. it. I mean, on Halloween, it's about kids and stuff. And, and to think that, that you saw me in a pumpkin, what the <laughs> is wrong with me 
Look, Jessica, I really want you to call me back. I'm mortified. If you give me another chance, I promise I'll never crap in a pumpkin again. <laughs> and not a lot of men can make that promise. Oh my god, and that is the way to start a relationship. Yeah, oh no. looks like oh my god, he got a little drunk and somebody asked him to do a prank and he did it and she must have seen him yep. which is why he got the number for the dude. loser line. I don't think a lot of women really find it attractive when a dude defecates in a pumpkin. I could no, be wrong though. No pooping in pumpkins. Hey, I None of it. Dudes are impressed by it. Women just are Dude, impressed. do you know yeah. who's going to be cool. even more surprised is the person who comes up later to smash that pumpkin. Oh, no! It's a vicious cycle. <laughs> Very vicious Icky. cycle. Your phone tap is coming up right after this. Two hopeless daters. One dating app that dares you to swipe right. The question is, whose love life is more tragic? It's Battle of the Tinder Dates. It's the dating game show that the New York Times called, quote, bad. Mm. <laughs> it's called Battle of the Tinder Dates. Oh. It's Brooke and Jubal in the morning where <laughs> two of our listeners go head to head to find out whose dating life is the most hopeless. We'll explain the rules in just a second, but first, let's meet today's contestants. In this corner, she's swiped left so many times, she has carpal tunnel in all mm -hmm. ten fingers. <laughs> Give it up for Rachel the Rupture. <laughs> What's up, Rachel? Hey, guys. Thank you. Yep, phone doesn't even work. Yeah, well, you know what? <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, I know we can hear you now. Too much swiping on that okay. phone is the problem. You should probably barely hold it. Yeah. yeah. And in the other corner, she got dumped by a boy in sixth grade and still hasn't quite gotten over it. Wow. Give it up for Mopey Mallory. Oh, Mallory. <laughs> Yay. Yay. God, we need to get you over that sixth grader. All right, here's how the game works. One contestant will start by telling one of their worst dating stories. Then the other will try to counter with a horrible dating story of their own. We'll go back and forth for three rounds, and then after that, we will crown a winner and see who is the grand champion of sadness. Yeah, wow. What All right, title. let's start. Rachel, you can go first. So this guy picked me up, and we were supposed to go to our concert. Mm -hmm. He tried to parallel park, and after four failed attempts, he broke off the date and said it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> what? Because he couldn't parallel park yeah. correctly? Dude, I feel, and sometimes I'm the same yeah. way. You know what? Yeah, you just bail on everything, though? Like, just go just find a spot you can pull into. Obviously, that, this that is a sign. It. This yeah. is a sign well, we shouldn't be dating. Okay. Well, I don't think you should date a man that can't parallel park, but that's my opinion. <laughs> Mopey Mallory, do you think I have a worse story than that? I think mine is actually a little worse. I met this guy, and he took me to, like, a really nice Italian restaurant. Mm -hmm. So we're sitting there going well, and he's, like, smelling the food. And he's like, I think it just possibly smells weird or spoiled. He goes, can you smell it? I'm like, yeah, whatever. I go in to smell it. He takes his hand, and he takes my head, and he smashes my <gasps> face into the food. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you punch him? I want to punch him for you. Did I punch him? No, I mean, what are you going to do? Obviously, the guy's, like, mentally ill, so... Or has a great sense of humor. Gotcha! Oh, my God, I'd be so angry. <laughs> okay, Rachel, can you beat having your face shoved in pasta? I go out with this guy to a Mexican restaurant, and he decides that he's going to have one too many orange margaritas. Mm. So he gets plastered drunk, mm -hmm. very embarrassing, and the mariachis come to our table... And he decides that he's going to have a frickin' tug of war with the mariachi and starts pulling his guitar. While they start playing tug of war, he breaks his guitar and we get kicked out of the restaurant. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. I want to die. Oh, my God. <laughs> that sounds kind of fun, though. Sounds like a fun-loving guy. What are you guys talking about? That guy sounds like an a-hole. Yeah, give it to me. Let, yeah, I, would I would play. play. Oh I can God, do this I better than you. <laughs> That's a guy you never want to drink with, ever. Okay, Mallory, it's your turn to counter. I'm with this guy, right? Good looking, totally normal, Harvard educated, whatever. After 15 minutes talking, he tells me that he's like all into the ancient brothel of Pompeii. Brothels? Yeah, you know what a brothel is, right? Right, that right. Is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And he's like, I wish you could go back in that time and live and be part of that. I'm like, this guy's a freaking psychotic nut job. <laughs> yeah, he's not like just like got a passion for learning about it. He's just, I wish there were more brothels. Right. That's all. Exactly. Oh, my God. Men are nuts. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now it's round number three. Rachel, you can go first. This has to be the worst ever, okay? So I'm walking to the park with my date. 
So out of nowhere, this kid comes up to my date, and he goes, Daddy, thinking that's his dad. And you know what? He turns and he runs away, and I never hear from him again. Wait, the guy Whoa. runs away from the kid? Yeah, like he had issues with children. Or was that or really that, his kid? Yeah, it might have like, actually oh been his kid. He found me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. Could have been one or the other, but the fact that he acted like that, oh, my God. Yeah. Now I have issues. <laughs> oh, my God. Just runs away. Wow. Okay, Mallory, oh, one last God. chance to see if you're the grand champion of sadness. All right, so uh, I'm driving with this guy, right? You know, talking in the car. He pulls over by, like, you know, a family building. And he's like, I'll be right back. So I'm like, all right, this is odd. So 15 minutes later, I see him coming. He's walking, and I can see from my rear view mirror. But the weird thing is, he's holding his sneakers, and he's got no socks on. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, this is really freaking weird, right? He gets in the car, I'm like, what happened? He's like, I don't know how to tell you this, but I had to go to the bathroom really bad, and there was no toilet paper, so I had to use my socks to clean myself. What? I mean, if you're going to do it, don't tell me. (laughs) can't make this up. Wow. But I say that literally. Yeah, yeah. seriously. Wow. All right. Oh my God. That was the final bell. That means the match is over. It was a very good fight from both of you, but we have to turn it over to the judges' final scorecards now. Brooke, how do you score the fight? I am really torn, to be yeah. honest. But I'm going to tell you, Rachel, I think you went out with a guy who ran from his own child in a park. <laughs> and for that, I think you're the winner. Wow. Hey, okay, Jose. Dude, I can't get over the guy wiping with his own socks. I got to give it to Mallory. That is Mallory? gross. Yay. Okay. So we're split, and I think that I am also going to have to go with the sock story. What? So I'm giving it to Mallory. Congratulations, Mallory. Yay. You Woo. are today's <laughs> grand champion of sadness. You have the most tragic dating life in the country right now. Yeah, I'm a loser. I'm the biggest loser. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your phone tap's coming up. Oh my god, she's like overexcited yeah. about this. You're really yeah. happy about this. All right, your phone tap's coming up right after this. It's Brooke and Jewel in the morning. It is the radio segment that was just awarded the key to the city Ooh. and your heart. Aww. Laser stories. The segment where we read weird news stories from around the globe, just like ever every other radio show does, except we have a laser. And those other idiots don't. This first laser story is out of Huntsville, Alabama. 29-year-old man named Brody Gates was huffing compressed air in his car the other day and passed out. Ain't nobody got time for that. When cops found him, he was slumped over the wheel with the engine of his car running. So they knocked on his window and Brody briefly lifted his head up and then took another hit of air duster and then passed out again. Yeah, oh my there. God. Oh, I guess time for another one. Okay. <laughs> Good night. Uh, Sounds so fun. So when they started banging on his window again, he woke up and noticed the cops, but paused to take another hit of compressed what? air anyway. Jeez, okay, dude. so the first one, I was like, all right, so maybe he didn't really get what was going on. The second time, now he's like, that is all on you, man. Yeah. Like, I'm going to jail. I yeah. might as well get really high He right also now. tried to drive off, but didn't oh, get okay. very far. Oh. He immediately swerved off the road, struck a parked vehicle, and drove through somebody's yard, and then crashed into a mailbox. Oh. Kapuya! Kapuya! He then hit a second parked car, before he finally came to a stop. Luckily, <laughs> nobody was serious hurt, seriously hurt. And when the cops knocked on his window once more, Brody gave him a thumbs up and passed out. <laughs> He's now facing multiple charges for drugs, fleeing the cops, leaving the scene of an accident, mm-hmm. and knowingly driving on a suspended license. Oh, okay. Thumbs up. Yep. This next laser story is out of Madison, Wisconsin. Last week, 911 received a call from a bank manager who said a robbery just happened and the man left the branch on foot. So police began patrolling the area and within minutes found a very important clue. Near a group of bushes, there was a random shirt lying on the ground. Mm -hmm. So they stopped the vehicle to check it out. And when officers got closer, they noticed two things. One, the discarded shirt was camouflage. And two, there was a shirtless man hiding in the nearby bushes holding a bag of money. (laughs) (laughs) You should have left your camouflage shirt on, buddy. <laughs> Officers arrested him right away, and the man was charged with robbery. As for why the thief ditched his camo shirt in what was probably the on- one and only moment of his life where it would have been useful. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Sorry, I was oh, bless you. <clears throat> he told police, quote, It was a spur-of-the-moment decision, and looking back, 
I now wish I would have kept it on. <laughs> Not sure what I was thinking. You know, some people just don't think good under pressure. I got to get this cam yeah. off. It's going to help me blend in with everything. <laughs> this next laser story is out of St. Augustine, Florida. The police got an anonymous tip the other day about a man and woman doing drugs in their car in the middle of a parking lot. Uh. <laughs> when oh they searched the car, they found drug paraphernalia and a substance that tested positive for crystal meth. That's fancy. Yeah, that's the fancy yeah. one. That's like the fancy that. version, Crystal. The high end. <laughs> yeah. And that's when they asked for the couple's identification, and they took a look at that. Everything made sense because the woman's legal name was Crystal Methvin. the beginning. Whoever the dealer was that got her hooked on meth, easiest sale ever. Yeah. Come on. It's in your name. You gotta sample it, right? You always want to try stuff that's named after uh-huh. you. <laughs> this isn't actually the first time we've seen a name like this. The same Crystal Methvin got arrested for drugs about six months ago. There was also a different woman named Crystal Methvin. Different spelling, though. On an episode what? of Judge Judy a few years ago. Her case wasn't about drugs, though. It had to do with a kitten that somebody bought for her. And then four years ago, there was another woman named Crystal Metheny who got arrested for shooting a BB gun at a car full of teenagers. So you're saying Crystal Metheny's are wild cards. Yeah. Yeah, You never know what you're going to get. If your last name has meth in it at all, don't give them the first name Crystal. It's probably not going to end up well. (laughs) This next laser story is out of the land of Insta stories. A bizarre new trend for foodies is popping up all over Instagram lately. And it's called Food Jenga. Double rainbow. Oh, my God. Oh, I've seen Food Jenga. Really? How does it work? Apparently, foodies are bored with their normal postings. So they've been stacking their entire meal by building Jenga-like towers out of their lunches or dinners. Interesting. Recent posts of impossibly high constructions have gotten thousands of likes, including towers of burgers and fries, along with cookies, brownies, and churros. Oh, yeah. Churro Jenga? I'm so there. I know. It just makes it more delicious for some reason. (laughs) Instagram users have shared the photos under the hashtag Food Jenga, with each one more and more daring than the last. A few have made structures out of french fries and sweet potato fries, interlocking them vertically and horizontally, just like a real game of Jenga, where players have to take turns removing one block at a time from the tower into the class. Makes sense. It's already shaped like Yeah, right. Totally. This next laser story is out of Color Headquarters. I'm not sure anyone makes it through childhood without developing a deep passion for Crayola crayons. Oh, man, they're the best. I was coloring with my kids the other day, and, like, those those generic ones, they hold nothing. No, they're not the same. They're not. Yeah. Yeah. They, like, the, the color isn't as vibrant. They're, like, waxy. Yeah. You can feel the same What does Crayola do to and they're like And they're, like, crayons? thinner, too. Yes, you they know? break. They break in your hand all the time. So, anyway, good news. Now that you're an adult, you're going to get a chance to draw on that nostalgia and draw that nostalgia all over your face. (laughs) Okay. I say that because Crayola just launched a new beauty line of makeup called Face Crayons. (laughs) That's awesome. They come in the classic yellow and green Crayola boxes. There are 58 different products in 95 different colors, including eyeshadow, highlighters, mascara, lipstick, and more. People who have tried Crayola's beauty crayons say that it's just like drawing with crayons, but on your face, and it looks a little better in the end. Yeah. That's a good thing. You know how to stay in the lines finally, so you're good. (laughs) If you want them, you can order them online because they are on sale now if you want some face crayons. All right. This next laser story is out of the study of you. There's definitely a lot to be said for not having big plans and just sitting at home on a Saturday night watching Netflix. Mm. Three seasons of Fuller House, you know. They're not going to watch themselves. <laughs> totally. And yeah. that's why a new survey asked thousands of Americans, when someone cancels plans, how do you feel? Mm. 53% of people said that they're usually disappointed, mm-hmm. yeah. but 22% are actually relieved when somebody <laughs> cancels plans on them. I know it depends. I am. I'm like, I'm a half and half. Sometimes I'm relieved. Mm. Sometimes I'm like, oh, God, you're canceling again. It Can't de- anyone just keep a commitment these days? It depends on how ready you are. If I'm yeah. like getting dressed That's about true. to leave, That's true. then Amen. I'm mad. If it's like a day before, I'm like, oh, oh yeah. Sweet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or early in the morning and yeah. it's not till later on. You're like, all right. Or the best is when you're trying to think of an excuse of how you're going to cancel. Oh, and yeah. then they send the text. I'm like, what? And then you know. play it off like, yeah. oh, no. Oh, that sucks. We'll have to do it again so, next so time. Let's reschedule. I mean. 
mean, I'm going to disappear from these texts for a few weeks, but yeah. let's reschedule. <laughs> you suddenly, you got the power play in your French yeah, right? <laughs> the breakdown by age is pretty interesting. People between 18 and 49 are twice as likely to be relieved about cancel plans really? as people over 50. That's because over 50, you're like, I should start doing stuff because I don't have much time left. And this is the one thing I plan on. I don't yeah. have much time 18 left. to 49, you're like, I got forever. I got other plans. Yeah. 50, you're like, I got two friends. <laughs> and two, and I only see them once every six months. So yeah. could better be do this. Yeah, because I might be dead. They might. Be. Who knows? I got to get out there in the world. God, I can't wait to get old. Yeah. That's actually what it says. It says probably because when you're younger, you have a lot of friends and a lot of stuff to do. So it can feel like a burden. But once you're older, your circle shrinks and you make fewer plans and you just got to do them because you might. But I will say on the bright side, your friends that you keep when you're older, you actually like. Yeah. Like, in, when you're in your early 20s, you're hanging out with all sorts of people. They're like, eh, oh, yeah. well, they'll do. They're filler. Dude, I remember right? high school. It's like, we're going to be friends forever. Ever. Like, 100 of us. Yeah, yeah, I don't really like those people We're all going to go but, out yeah. all the time together every single day for the rest of our lives. Yeah, no matter what. Yeah. yeah. You promise, guys? You promise? Yeah. <laughs> well, I know somebody who doesn't really need any friends. All he needs is that shoe. That's the sound of a turtle humping a shoe, which means that Laser Stories has come to an end for the day. We'll do it again, same time, on Friday. It's a question humans have pondered for centuries. Mm. Where do our thoughts come from? Ooh. It's Brooke and Jubal in the morning. Ooh, they come from deep. aliens, mm, ghosts, mm -hmm. hats. Yeah. <laughs> Some experts believe that thoughts come from our minds. No, Whoa. you stop it, that Jubal. Is very interesting. So let's <laughs> test that with a round of what's on your mind and find out what each member of the show has been thinking about lately. Mm. Brooke, what's on your mind today? I can't stop thinking about it. I had left my glass of wine on the dining room table for like two hours. Like, you know, kids had to be bathed. Ugh, we need to be put to sleep. So <laughs> mama didn't get a drink or wine for a while. Okay. I finally go downstairs and I'm like, oh, yes. Take a huge swig. I'm like, that's weird. There's something hard in my wine. Oh. <laughs> I spit it out into my hand after, of course, I had drank all the wine around it. Oh. And there's this little black thing sitting there, and I couldn't figure out what it was. I'm like, is it a, like a weird grape stem? Or, you know, sometimes it has oh. that stuff at the mm -hmm. bottom of the a bottle. wine bottle. Yeah. But I'm like, I'm drinking out of a box, so I don't even think that that's possible. <laughs> I spit it out into the... Or I, and then I threw it into the sink, and that's when I saw wings come yeah. out. Oh. It, didn't, it didn't move around, though? No, it was Oh, dead. that's the worst. Oh, when you like a, drink a fly or something and you feel it move. Oh, oh my God. It was around. so <laughs> disgusting. And I started freaking out. And my daughter's like, don't think about it, Mom. Just don't think about it. Yeah. And I can't stop thinking about it. I had a fly banging around in my mouth. And flies are so gross. Yeah, yeah. They're like that's the disgusting. grossest insect. It was probably on poop oh. before that. Pro yeah, well, it definitely was. Yeah. It was. And it was eating a big poop before fly, that. you guys. Disgusting. I mean... <laughs> Maybe half an inch. Okay. And, and like flies, it was huge. Flies puke on everything. Oh touch. my god! Yeah. I know. <laughs> all of it. I can't stop thinking about it. That'll stick with you for a few more weeks. <laughs> so when we do the segment next week, you'll probably still be thinking about that. Jose, what's been on your mind? 
Man, I, I don't know if it's worth it to own my car anymore. All right, I've gotten two parking tickets in the last three days, okay? <laughs> these are stupid tickets, too, that when you're like an inch into the, some intersection and they're like, oh, oh here's a $80 fine for yeah. nothing. Right. You I'm run sure over a stop was... sign on the corner and just yeah. leave your car there. Yeah. And then they give you a ticket for that. Exactly. Well, then Google. I get my mail yesterday and I have a collections notice for like three other parking tickets uh -huh. that I've had years ago that I didn't even remember that I owed for. Yeah, so it's not your fault if you don't remember. <laughs> I mean, you. gosh. And then I'm paying insurance, I pay my tabs, gas is expensive, and I'm like trying to calculate it all and I think, is it just more worth me Ubering it? everywhere I love how on. your, your <laughs> solution you know what is I mean? Uber. Most people's solution would be like, oh, maybe I should go to public transit or get a great bike. Yeah, but yeah, then no, I gotta be that. around people and then with the bike I have to work out and sweat. I don't want to sweat. Yeah, and, yeah I know? mean, you barely like driving as it is. Totally. So. I Uber in a lot of places Are you and it's kidding only me? like 25 bucks to get to work every day. It Do you think be... it costs $25 for you to drive your car I, one way to work? Well, I don't know. I haven't done the math very well, but the gas I think alone is... <laughs> I think it's at least 150 to drive your 10 miles? I support this decision. Maybe. Yeah, you should definitely take know. Uber everywhere now to, and get rid of your car. I need to think more about it, but that's where I'm at right you now. You don't okay. even use a gallon of gas to get to work. I don't know how much I use. $40. That's worth $40. <laughs> Half a gallon of gas is like 40 bucks. So, yeah, you're, you're, you're making a wise financial decision. Thank you, Duba. This is amazing. All right, Jeff, what's <laughs> been on your mind? Uh, I don't remember the last time that I watched sports. And it's really? kind of bumming me out. Dude. I used to be a huge sports fan, and I think it's been years since I've honestly watched years? any. Yeah, I don't think. But I think the last thing that I watched a sports game was like the Women's World Cup. Yeah. Two years yeah. ago or whatever it was. And it was that awesome. That was awesome. Yeah, the it, World Cup is awesome. But I, since then, I feel so disconnected from the world because I don't know anything. That's I don't know any true. of the players. Right. I, and, and a lot of people talk about it here. Yeah. And I'm just quiet. Why aren't you watching them? Well, I'm watching a lot of Bravo That's now. That's what I was going to say. Oh, okay. You put a yeah. lot of effort into planning <laughs> your go. royal okay. wedding yeah. party. Yeah. But like, Bravo <laughs> shows are so entertaining. Yeah. And yeah. I'm kind of into it now. So basically, America's, America's like. Next Top Model's on uh, sometimes. That real estate <laughs> best listing or whatever. No, yeah, no, good no, shows. no. Reality shows. Vanderpump Rules. Oh, sorry. Southern oh. Charm. Okay. Even the Housewives, I'm getting into it. God. Your sports lineup has just changed. Yeah, I guess it has. You know, to the Real Housewives and everything else. So now you just need to learn the starting lineups for that so you can have conversations with people and just interject into when they're talking actual sports. Like they're talking like basketball or something else and be like, what's the Vanderpump chick's name? I know that's her last name, right? Yeah, Lisa Vanderpump. Lisa Vanderpump. Yeah. So you can I don't like, know that one. Did you see well. Vanderpump last night? Yeah. Oh my gosh. She went three for three. killed it. What's um, on your mind, Jubal? I guess what's on my mind is... Every time we do this segment, uh, people hit me up and they're like, you're always so negative because you rant about everything mm -hmm. and you never seem to like anything. I've ranted about old people. Well, pretty much mm -hmm. people in general. Yeah, just people. That's what I usually spend this segment doing. So <laughs> I figured I'll take a moment and be positive. Wait, is this going to hurt you? Because I'm not negative all the time. Yeah. Just most of <laughs> the time. <laughs> so what am I happy about? Um, okay. I'm happy about I finally made some prints of one of my paintings and they sold almost all of them already oh really yeah cool. so that's cool that's exciting that's awesome I like jose i don't pay for parking but i haven't gotten a parking ticket in four months wow and i've been how testing get out of I, that i just leave the car and i hope i'm just seeing how long i can go i figure by now i've <laughs> i've made up all the money that i would have spent on a ticket anyway I'm, so I'm, I'm, careful, I'm gonna keep going like i feel the city. i feel like you're using all your good karma on escaping parking tickets so be careful <laughs> that must yeah. be it yeah also excited about a new app thing that i signed up for that people can follow my comedy shows so if you text the word jubal to 36260 you can get updates on that good. that's just, cool i'm happy about that yeah just, okay and also i've been really good at honking at people who are making slow right hand turns. I've been destroying them lately. Just every single time somebody's making a really slow right hand turn, I just light them up. It's great. That sounds kind of negative, negative though. Yeah, well, it is well, negative. Well, yeah, put your foot on the gas pedal. Why Why okay. do people stop move couldn't, so couldn't. slowly taking yeah. right hand turns? I don't understand. Because they're the on darkness. their phone checking their stuff because they were at a stoplight. And so now they're trying oh, to finish up I've, their text message maybe, while they're turning. I've also been hitting people really really good at, at uh, stoplights when it turns green and they like hesitate for a second to go i've been no. i've been so good at the horn lately that's a lot of i'm proud that, of it it's kind of like a negative energy that you're putting out yeah. there with that <laughs> horn is it yeah but i'm happy about it well i think you may be the only one that's all i'm saying text in what's on your mind this week it's brook and jubal in the morning
60 seconds away from your shock caller question of the day. It's Brooke and Jubal in the morning. But before we get to that, I've been told mm. by our producers that young Jeffrey has a special announcement to make to start off the show. Why is it sad music then? I don't know. They told me to play this music. I don't like sad music before a special announcement. Jeff's plugging right. in his headphones right now, softly putting them on his supple ears. Yes, very supple today. <laughs> Jubal, you have an announcement. Yes. Um, yesterday morning, Jubal, you seemed a little frustrated saying that we've been kicking off the show a lot lately by talking about some sort of food news. Well, no. I don't know what. Okay. I'm sorry about that. Hit the wrong thing. Okay, anyway. We actually went back deep into our archives and we found out you were correct. We did talk about food news for two days straight. Wow, not two days. <laughs> you had to have been yeah. more than that, right? Yeah, that it makes was, it crazy. It was two straight days. You are right. Definitely not, well, uh, not cool. Yeah. Straight days, but yeah. probably, oh, wow. I would say... 80% of the time we start 80? the show talking about food that news. That is not true. 80%. 80%. We do a lot of food news on this I'll show in just I'll in general. Half, well, yeah. I, I wanted to assure you that we will not be doing any food news this morning. Oh, well, that's okay. Cool. okay. Well, we've just spent the last couple minutes talking about it. Well, instead, <laughs> uh -huh. we'll be doing food sports. Oh, oh that's why you have that music in here. Yes, okay. food sports, Jubal. Oh. And there was a lot of action last night in the wild world of food sports. First of all, let's head over to the game at the Rice Bowl where the Ice Rice Bowl. Yep, oh. Ice Cream a la mode took on the heavy favorites, barbecue pork. Barbecue pork getting off to a hot and spicy oh start, taking oh. a three to one lead. By the third inning, ice cream looking a little freezing cold uh -oh. over there. Uh -oh. and that's ice when coaches decided to bring in the sprinkles. Oh. Oh, my God. You can't deny the sprinkles. After that, they never looked yeah. back. They pull out some, the come-from-behind lictory. It was incredible. Yeah. Thank God for sprinkles. <laughs> I know ownership never had Briar's remorse after that move. And side note, <laughs> singing the national anthem that night was Alice Scooper. Oh. We will have more food sports coming up tomorrow <laughs> on the network that hates food news, Fork Center. Oh, back to you in Fork Studio Center. Jubal. Thanks. Why do I think that was the best thing that's ever happened? <laughs> Excuse your terrible food puns. Because oh food sports is great. Terrible yeah. or amazing, Jose. Yeah. It really depends on your opinion. Yeah, I'm down. You can do that every day. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah. A lot of going on in the world of food sports. There is. You know? There is a lot. Uh, what about the shot collar? Should we do that now, too? Yeah. Let's go to the shot collar question of the day. <laughs> yeah, toss it over. Like a good... Uh, Sports reporter, yeah. sports food reporter. <laughs> all right, it's time for the shot caller question of the day. Young Jeffrey is already in studio with a hat full of names. We'll draw a name out of the hat to see who will put on the shot caller today. They're asked a trivia question. If they get it right, they don't get shocked. Jeff does because he asked a terrible question. If they get it wrong, they get shocked to the song that you want us to sing. Text in at 78592. What song do you want to hear from the person who gets shocked today? Brooke has drawn a name out of the hat because she had the shot caller last. And who did you get? Wild card, uh -oh. Jeff. Food Sports Network. <laughs> yeah, wait, did you okay. have a name? Did you have a name for your sports, food sports yeah, report? Well, it's Fork Center. Fork, Fork Center. Center. Yeah. Sorry, Fork sorry, Center. sorry. Right. Brought to you by. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by Ford. Yeah, yeah it's always Ford. <laughs> yeah. Let, right. Let's do Jose today. Oh, Jose, okay. Man. Jose's got the shot collar while he's putting that on. Jeff, please read Jose the shot collar question of the day. Recently, a survey asked 11,000 moms to share their baby's first word. And they compiled the list of the most common first words for babies. The top two were dada and mama. Name the other three that made it into the top five. And I'll let you ask me any word and I'll tell you if you're right. Whoa, what's so crazy about this? Mm -hmm. What's crazy about this? I, I, Jose's the only one in studio that can stand to watch all my kid videos. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Yeah, and the first thing I showed him when we got to work today was a video of my little baby yeah. trying to talk. And so what was he trying to do? He, he could say he can say ball right ball? now really well. A That's... truck. Well, he kind of sounds like he well, says the F word. You know, but... whatever. <laughs> Most kids do. I would say light is a big word for kids. Well, is... I don't know why. So light. would you say I, that I... L, L is easy to pronounce? It has to be something easy well, for their little baby mouths to enunciate. I mean, I even think with babies, that when they say light, they say I. Uh, or maybe they're saying I. Like, I. 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 <laughs> 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 Could be, Jubal. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you understand yeah. it better. Uh, strain peas again? Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I. <laughs> 
Um, I just saw a viral video of a baby that said taco. Oh, that was awesome. But I think that's very no. rare. I think dog is a big one. A lot of people have dogs in their house, and so yeah. it's a big part that's, of a kid's life. Or Cadillac. Cadillac, <laughs> yep. I think Jubal's on the right word. track. That's a classy baby, yeah. 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 <laughs> Parallelogram, is that what you're thinking? So it's got to be like mama, dada. It's got to be something that's very, very easy. I like ball. I like dog. I'm going to say dog is one of them because a lot of kids have dogs and they get to play with the dog a lot. Oh, I got another one. Like dog. Yeah, think of things that are big in babies' lives. Bottles. Oh, yeah. They say baba. 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 So if they don't say the names right, we're just saying what they're trying to say. That's okay, too. Okay, yeah, yeah, got yeah. it. So can I, can I ask, is baba or bottle one of them? Baba is one of the top oh, five. Oh, okay. We're making, okay, progress. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go bottle. I'm going to say dog. I feel like it's ba-ba, da-da. What else is two syllables like? Service. Bottle <laughs> service. Baba, baba bottle service. Bottle service, yes. <laughs> Try it. What else did a kid want? Oh, 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 they're pacifier. What are they called? Binkies? Binkies. They they all have different words for that. Yeah, everybody has like a different name yeah. for it. Dang it. One more, I guys. Do that. One more, because we got a... Uh, um, poopy diaper. I would go light if I were you, but that's just me. Light? Yeah, kids are enthralled by light. Okay, I'm going to go with the expert. Light is my third one. According to a recent survey of 11,000 moms, these are the most common first words for babies right now. Number one is dada. Number two is mama. The other ones in the top five are baba for yes. bottle, doggy or dog yes! for puppy, and the last one... Uh-huh. Hi. Oh, hi. hi. Oh, they do that a lot. It's so easy. Yeah. Yeah. Especially at like I grocery checkout lines. They look at you life. and they're just like, hi. And you're like, hi. Well, I don't want, I didn't come here to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm by myself. Kids. I don't know you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know you. Small talk with babies. That's the worst. <laughs> um, somebody wanted to hear Don't Speak by No Doubt. Speak by No Doubt. <laughs> so you can sing that before you get shocked. Am I ready? Yep. Don't speak, I know just what you're saying So please stop explaining Don't tell me cause it hurts ah! oh, it really hurt. yeah. oh. Alright, your phone tap's coming up in just a few minutes It's Brooke and Jewel in the morning Ooh, and 92.5. Bradley Johnson with 1-800-DUI-AWAY Not getting behind the wheel after drinking is the best choice but if you're pulled over, the next best choice is to call 1-800-DUI-AWAY. It's another Jubal phone tab. And weekday mornings on the 20s. Only on moving 92.5. Hello? Hi, is this Kenny? Yes, this is here. Who am I speaking with? Kenny, my name is Seth McElroy. We haven't met each other yet, but I am actually your parents' neighbor. How are you doing? Um, I'm doing all right. How are you doing? Mr. McElroy, you said? Yeah. You said you're my parents' neighbor? Yeah, yeah. I'm watching their house while they're out of the country. Oh, yeah. Right. I, I think they did tell me that one of the neighbors was going to watch their house. How are you yeah. doing? I'm all right. I'm calling because they actually listed your number as an emergency contact. So I just need to talk to you for a second. Oh, is, is there some sort of emergency? Uh, I wouldn't say emergency, but there is something that happened, and I might need your help. <laughs> what happened? So earlier this morning, I heard the side gate open. Okay. okay. And so I sprung into action thinking it was an intruder, and I accidentally beat up their gardener pretty bad. You, are you joking me? No. Again, like I said, I just reacted because I'm watching the place. So he was opening the door, I guess, to do his that's job. Raul. That's Raul. That's the sweetest man in the world. Why would you beat him up at all? Well, because I thought he was an intruder. You know, like I said, I'm on guard. I'm watching at all times. And I heard a gate open. I just reacted before I knew it. I'm pummeling the gardener. <laughs> he, he's like 80 years old. Yeah, he's, he's an older gentleman. He didn't put up much of a fight either. <laughs> what, are you, what are you, some kind of masochistic fool? Are you f kidding me? No, I feel bad about it. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, I you should feel terribly about it. Yeah, anyway... After he explained to me who he was, I told him I was sorry, and then he was like, uh, I'm still going to call the police. And I know from watching all these TV shows that I watch, nothing good ever happens when you call the police, you know? No, that doesn't make any sense at all. Of course the police should have been called. This is the very situation that you should call the police in. <sighs> well, yeah, because he was breaking and entering, right? Is that what you're saying? No, I didn't because want... you assulted an old man, you f Well, he had a weapon, and that's you what... Don't have a... what, what, what weapon are you referring to? 
Okay, it was more of a weed whacker. But anyway, that's not the point. Not a weapon. The point is, currently he's tied up and gagged in your parents' bathroom. What? Are you kidding me right now? (laughs) No. No, I wish I was. But look, don't worry. Feeding him, giving him water, and that's why I called you for help. They shouldn't have even needed to call me. This should have never happened. Right. I agree. I wish he would have knocked or rang the doorbell first. But anyway, this is where we are now. I beat up the gardener. He's tied up and gagged in your parents' bathroom. And you and I need to work together to find a good resolution. Well, what are you talking about? We. I have nothing to do with this. I'm not involved with this, Seth. You're a f- criminal. Well, you are the emergency contact. So I don't care what kind of contact I am. I'm not helping you. It's really easy. I just need you to drive a car. Do you need me to drive a car for to, to take him to the hospital? Because I will absolutely take him as far away from you as possible. No, no, I just need, actually need you to take his car and then drive it to the edge of the city and torch it. To what? Just drive it somewhere remote and then set it on fire. And then I'll pick you up and then we'll drive over to his house and we'll plant some drugs there. No, I, I, I've never done drugs in my life. No, no, no. no. Not involved in You're so all. confused. You're so confused. We're not going to do any drugs. We're going to plant them at his house so that we can call the cops and tip them off that he's a drug dealer. No, I'm not doing any of this. I'm not involved in your sick schemes. You're a f- lunatic. I don't know why my parents would ever trust you with our house. I am going to call the police myself and I'm going to save Raul. What was that you said? I am going to save Raul. Okay, well, Raul is actually perfectly fine because this is a prank phone call. Come again? This is actually Jubal from Brook and Jubal in the morning doing a phone tap on you, and your parents actually set you up. What? It's a joke. No, this, oh my God, no. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. They told me they had a new neighbor watching the place and that you were skeptical of him, so... <laughs> Well, yeah, I was worried about that gardener being in there, too. <laughs> That's not what I was talking about. I meant you. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up every morning with Jubal Phone Tabs. Weekday mornings on the 20s. Only on Moving 92.5. Twenty-two wins in a row today, Brooke. That's what you're going for. Okay. And you're going to be playing Gar in Mill Creek. What's up, Gar? Hey, how are you guys? Pretty good. Oh, man, you know I'm feeling like a real champion today, Gar. Not, yeah, let's hope. Not to toot my own horn, but not only am I going for twenty-two wins here, I won the trivia app game HQ yesterday. Oh, that's right. Yep. Put a whole dollar and five cents in my bank account from it. <laughs> You're only making me more nervous, but let's see. Right. <laughs> I'm going to send Brooke out of the studio. Guard, the game is played like this. you got 30 seconds to answer as many questions as possible. If you don't know one, just say pass, and you have to beat Brooke outright to win. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, here we go. Your time starts now. After 60 years, IHOP just announced that they are officially changing one letter in their brand name. Which letter? International. Frank Lloyd Hi. Wright became famous in which profession? Pass. Junk mail produces how many pounds of landfill each year? One million, one billion, or a hundred billion pounds? hundred billion pounds. What's the official title of the spiritual head of Buddhism? Pass. Maple syrup is graded by what? Quality, color, or sweetness? Quality. Say that one more time. I couldn't hear you over the buzz. Quality. Quali- quality? Quality, yes. Okay, cool. Hey, Gar, you ever been in a oh, car accident? Color. Dang, can I change color? No, you can't change it now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Go- okay, that's right. Gar, you ever been in a car accident? Yes. Okay. That'd be cool. I'm Gar. I just got in a car accident. <laughs> well, you know what? If you've ever been in a car accident, hopefully <clears throat> now you can use the number for my friends at Advocates, 206-512-3555, online, advocateslaw.com, because Gar, they can make sure you get all the money that you're owed from the insurance companies if you're in a car accident. It wasn't very fun, right, when you were in that car accident dealing with those insurance companies? No, it wasn't. No, but now it can be fun. It's like a party when the advocates help you. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the tip. You're welcome. 206-512-3555, onlineadvocateslaw.com. Consultation is free, and they've gotten over $100 million for their clients. Okay, Gar? Got it. Glad we could have that talk. What do you do for a living? Uh, Finance IT. Finance IT? Yeah. 
you know what? Can I give you one more uh, bit of information? Sure. Uh, you guys gave me uh, baseball tickets yesterday. Uh-huh. So it's two days in a row. Uh-oh. They... I called yesterday and talked to Jose. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm sorry. Why are you sorry? Jose's <laughs> lovely on the phone. He's loud, though. He is yeah. loud in here, but I bet people can hear him real clear yeah, on the phone. Yeah, for sure. Well, you... Well, good, well, congratulations, I guess, on that, and we'll see if you win Brooks Bucks, okay? What's the bit of information Thank for? Just to... Just to tell us that, well, I guess. Just to tell us and warn us. I don't, we'll have to see the rules and see if you win this 100 bucks or not, bro. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, that just got... Anyway. Wow, what'd it be a downer? Him him yeah. Brooke is uh, back in studio. Their headphones on, obviously. You ready to go? Yeah. All right, here we go. Your time starts now. After 60 years, IHOP just announced that they are officially changing one letter in their brand name. Which letter is it? P. Frank Lloyd Wright became famous in which profession? Architecture. Junk mail produces how many pounds of landfill each year? One million, one billion, or a hundred billion pounds? Uh, one billion. What's the official title of the spiritual head of Buddhism? Oh, the Dalai Lama. Maple syrup is graded by what? Quality, color, or sweetness? Mm, color. What Southwest city is the only one in America with two Q's in its name? Albuquerque. With honeybees, females are called workers. What are males called? Uh, hot. All right, let's send it on over to the scoreboard and see how you guys did with Jose. How's everybody doing? My name is Mr. Wacky. Melania. <laughs> Gar, man, you got zero today. Oh, Gar. Yeah. That hurt. Brooke. Yeah. You got six. Dude. Ooh, Gar. Tough game for you today, man. I pummeled you. Yep. Yep. All right, let's go over the answers, though. After 60 years, IHOP just announced that they're officially changing one letter in their name. Which letter is it? They're changing the P. They're changing it to a B. I-H-O-B. But they haven't revealed what the B stands for yet. Everybody thinks it's breakfast, right? Booty. 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 International House of Booty. (laughs) Frank Lloyd Wright became famous for architecture. Junk mail produces how many pounds of landfill each year? One million, one billion, or a hundred billion pounds? One billion pounds each year. What is the official title of the spiritual head of Buddhism, Buddhism, the Dalai Lama, currently on the 14th Dalai Lama in history? Maple syrup is graded by what? Quality, color, or sweetness? It's graded by color. For example, grade A is dark amber. What Southwest city is the only one in America with two Q's in its name? That would be Albuquerque. With honeybees, females are called workers and the males are called dogs. They are all dogs. Uh, They're called drones. The purpose is to mate with the queen. Mm -hmm. Hey, Gar, you didn't win the money, but just for playing today, you got the new movie Jumanji starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Kevin Hart on Blu-ray, all right? Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Anything else? Anything else you want to tell us about yourself, Gar? (laughs) Mm-hmm. No, I'm good. You sure? Are you excited about that Mariners game you're going to? Yes, I am. I'm going to take my son. I'm super excited about that. Okay. Oh, see? There you go. Well, There's a positive. You'll have to spend your own money on concessions because yeah. you didn't win any money here for Wimbrook's <laughs> But we'll play Wimbrook's at the same time tomorrow. Moving 92.5.